the basic one, yeah, it's good to have the flame, etc. Like, they're all good, but um, typically there's supposed to be a couple of other ones, and I'm thinking that they are on. Um, they're on the vassal site. Just gotta check real quick. Is there anything for? God, what was it called? Nope, doesn't look like it, which is like super weird. Alright, well that's something I'll have to probably complain a bit at some point. Just goes kinda goes to show that like nobody really plays <laughs> night missions all that much. Cause yeah, they're supposed to be um I think it's based off of the uh, um the Arnhem, not Arnhem, I'm just blanking on it. When the, um, when they assaulted in, uh, on June 6th, 6th and 7th, the Brits there, um, Pegasus Bridge, that's the friggin' one. So Pegasus Bridge so is question why you've light lit all of my things on fire so the flames are just because the um the ssrs state that um there needs to be like they're all illuminated locations and so illuminated from what i can understand in the rules is that it has to like it's basically a location that i can see i can't necessarily see the units that are in it um just that i can see that like those are buildings just because of the way that um that night vision typically works all right so what was the ones i'd call i know you're revealing one because you're being really nice uh 8k2 8b1 8g2 And fortified, okay. All right, there's your recon. How do I guess two of your <laughs> your locate leader locations? Uh, all right, I just double check here. B one and G two. Oh, all right, cool. All right, you can uh, you can conceal all again. Um, I'm sorry, what? Uh, so, um, as far as I recall from recon, uh, I don't they don't stay hidden forever. They just um, I just get to see <laughs> what the contents are. Let's uh, let's see here, recon. Uh, final DR is number of hexes which the scenario defender must reveal units in if in fact it's set uh, up in them. Hidden units are placed in their set of hexes concealed. Uh, concealed units in these hexes lose their concealed status regardless of the presence. So they lose their concealed status but it doesn't say anything about getting it back. Oh, I, I thought they got it back. Okay, well, they'll get it back soon enough anyways. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, they're they're revealed for the moment and then we'll see. Yeah, and they'll, they'll get unconcealed. All right. Um, so I mentioned this in the thread. Uh, it's my first time playing a night scenario as well, so if we're both um, screwy on how things work, um, nothing to worry about too much. We'll, uh, we'll figure this out slowly but surely. Let's see. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. I think the only thing left in the pregame is for me to drop my sniper. Oh, yeah. I also want to copy this. Just do. No, actually, I think I'm supposed to do it first because I'm technically the defender. 
Uh, I mean, it wouldn't... It, I had that place as soon as I'd done my setup. Um, I think technically you're supposed to do it at the end of your setup. But regardless, like, for me, it, it doesn't change where I would put them. You, if you put your... To me, if you put your sniper anywhere on the map, I'm not... Uh, it's very rare that I'm going to have my sniper go after your sniper. Um, can turn four, no more. It's right. within what, six hexes of the sniper? So how the sniper placement works is that it should be six hexes to six different units. And if that can't be accomplished, then it's like five hexes to, or six hexes to like five units, and then four, and then so on you kind of just count down well the problem i have here is that obviously none of your units are on the board at start so i could pretty much put it anywhere yes there is no um if if someone sets up off board it's whatever you think is like a likely location for them to come in or where your sniper would be best placed so yeah that's what i'm saying so if it does activate it's it can potentially target what units within six hexes so it's uh, it, it's further than six. It, basically, it's infinite. The, the way that it works is that um, when a sniper activates, you roll two dice, one for direction and the other for distance. And then, um, so let's say like, so my sniper will say I roll four, two. So he goes two hexes down south, right? Um, so now in L10, because there's a unit there, he goes to him. But if there wasn't anybody, he has to pick the nearest target that conforms to distance. And if it's a tie, then it's whatever is lowest TEM. So um, we'll ignore, say, these two units. Um, the sniper would be close to M10, M2, and L2, or sorry, K2. Um, I'd have to pick N10 because it's because the, the woods are there. That's the lowest TEM of the three hexes. Oops, there we go. So even if even if your sniper ends up in B1 for whatever reason, it still has to go to the the nearest unit to B1. That way, like you don't lose a sniper shot. Yeah. Okay. Um, so all right, let's see. Like really, the the biggest things is uh, to sort of mitigate. Um, people messing with snipers in the sense that so like with your guy over in c9 on board eight if i put my sniper say like in the river it's a legal place for him for the sniper to be I, as far as i can remember um and if i'm within the six six hexes of all of these units then as long as i get a six one or two on my direction roll I'm almost like assured to go to C9, right? So it's kind of that sort of thinking on where you're putting uh, snipers. It's what kind of effect or how do you want it to uh, to benefit you if you roll it. All right. Well, that will do for now. Okay. Um, just trying to think if there's anything else all oh, right uh, the other thing we got to do and there's a ton of them is um, night basic got to do a bunch of no move counters because as far as I understand it none of your units can move up until um, I think it's after the first turn or after my first turn and then your leader gets to your best leader gets to roll to see if he can move otherwise it's um if anybody shoots or does certain things uh i think that's it so i think you go first correct yeah yeah it's it'll be my turn first um, again, I'll just be represented by the Axis because Chinese are considered allied normally, so it's just easier that way. Um, and because the counters are missing, so uh, 
<laughs> just FYI that normally, so the NVR is set to three, but there's a minus one due to the half moon and clouds. So technically it's, it's actually two NVR. Um, otherwise, I think that's it. I know I have to roll a bunch of string dice, so that's going to be interesting. Yep. Actually, at the start of its movement phase, each onboard ground unit or stack wishing to move in that max. So if I'm off board, I don't need to make the roll, which is interesting. All right. I guess that makes sense because otherwise you could stray off board and that would be dumb. Um, also, uh, I guess for anybody who's watching, uh, the reason why I have a bunch of cloaking is because <laughs> cloaking is a special thing for the attacker in these scenarios um, and they're represented by a counter only. So everything I have is uh, technically hidden at the moment. Which means I'm going to have to have my cloaking display to the side so I can remember exactly what everybody has. Alright, I think that's it. Uh, there was one other thing too, just so that we can hopefully um, keep this in mind. Uh, the NVR can change. Um, from what I understand, uh, during the weather roll, but not the first one, the um, oh, where the heck was it? There's a way for NVR to change. E112. Ah, yeah, there we go. So it's a six. So, uh, if the color die is six, the white die, depending on the white die, it will up, go up or down. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, not rolling it, not rolling for that specifically, but rolling for weather, no change. So. Without further ado, I can't prep fire. Let's get this on the road. Um, I don't believe that I need to, well, I'll just declare anyways, uh, because I think I need actually I forget if I need to declare it or not, or just the movement factors that it'll cost. So, um, not that it'll really have much of an effect. Anyways, uh, so G is going to declare gallop. So two, four, six, eight, and just stop uh, whenever. By the way, um, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, and. Uh, they're going to dismount from there. So I don't know if I need to reveal it, but I'll just put it down anyways. Um, so that costs them one movement factor. And then they will spend three to get into J7. Um, they have to pay two. They, they have the partisan bonus. But if you go into concealment terrain, it costs an extra one movement factor. Uh, oh, we'll do the same thing. Declare gallop. That's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Excuse me, fourteen. They will then dismount and then go up the hill for two. Uh, and that's three movement factor total. And they shall stay there. M is also going to declare gallop. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. get out of the horses and then uh, two to get in there and lastly that's in the these two are the wrong cloaking displays that's cool all right uh, gallop again two four six eight perfect And 
And then they will also go up into J7 for their um, final move. <laughs> Uh, stack Q over on this side. It's going to go here for one, two, three, five. J is going to go one, two, four. And stack E is going to go one, two, three, Four. Stack B is going to go into A8 and then B7 for three. Sorry, four, but whatever. Um, and left side N is going to go one, two, three, four. D is going to go one, two, three, four. F is going to go one, two, three, four. And K is going to go one, two, three, four. Where's my stack? Cool. I think it's an extra movement point you said to go into concealment terrain. Yeah. So it's an extra one for the brush. Uh, for B7, yeah. That was four total to get in there. Nobody here is in brush yet. Oh, my bad. I thought yeah, that, uh, yeah, no worries. I thought that um, I'm going to have... This guy is going to go for two and four. Oops. Two, four. Well, again, shouldn't those be three, three? Like no, because no. so because they're woods, it it only cost me one to get in them because I'm powder part of that. Yeah. Um, okay. This is gonna be two, two, and stop. I'm gonna have I go in there for. Three, I think that is. And how do I want this to play out? It's going to go in there for three and then four. Okay. This is where it gets fun. Perfect. Okay. Okay, isn't he's good? Yeah, he's good. I'm going to have uh, this guy is going to go here for th three. And then four. Uh, 
Uh, also, I learned something today. Uh, so apparently, P10 doesn't count as a half hex like I, I assumed it was. Um, the way that the rule is, is that uh, if two different hexes are in play, um, in the case of an open ground and say like an orchard where this would be olive grove, um, the entire hex is an olive grove. So it didn't affect this in the last um, situation, but uh, for this one, I don't think it will either, but just in case. Uh, and that's it for moves. I don't know if defensive fire is possible. Look up and see whether I can actually launch a star shell right now. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I'll look for that as well because that's always good to know. 1.92 fits. The unit must be in good order, and neither area nor in a pillbox nor pin nor TI to fire a star shell. Uh, before a leader. Including a crew exposed armor leader can fire a turn a star shell during that player turn. He must first make a usage dice roll. So it's leaders. So yeah, I have a question actually. Uh, looking at the SSRs, um, number two, sentence three says only Chinese elite first line units may use star shells. I'm reading that to mean that only those units can do it, and that the leaders cannot. But I wanted to confirm that with you. Oh, so, um, yeah, I don't know if that's supposed to supersede. I think, I think the, the way it, um, it's written is just because, um, in, what is this, the E chapter? Yeah, so in, uh, E1.912, it says uses usage restrictions, uh, and the second line is just before a crew exposed AFV with no armor leader or an A or an MMC can fire a star shell and must make, first make a usage die roll of two or less. So an MMC can make a, a star shell dice roll, and I assume that the SSR is limiting that to not any MMC, but specifically the first line and elite ones. So leaders can, and so can elite and first uh, and first line. Ah, well, not the conscripts. Okay, that's the yeah. That. that seems really. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, let's see then. Uh, in addition, after a play turn in which the first one oh, that's hasn't applied yet. Oh, uh, never mind. Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. We don't have any interior building hexes, do we? No, so an interior building hex would be if um, uh, it has to be a hex that is completely surrounded by uh, buildings. Like a building hex surrounded by building hexes. Star shells, first time during prep fire, moving phase, defense fire phase, if LOS to enemy unit, moving enemy vehicle, friendly gun flash for enemy fire for effect. 
Okay, so if I'm reading this correctly, and please correct me, um, if I want to fire a star shell, I have to make a usage die roll of less than or equal to four, correct? Uh, so if it's the MMCs, it's less than, it's two or less. And if it's a leader, it's the four or whatever. The yeah, this is from here. So this is the leader in G2. Okay. I, okay. So we failed that one. Um, I wonder if, can I only do it once or can I just keep doing it until I run out of leaders or units? Uh, I think I can just keep doing it. Yeah, so the way I understand it is that by um, by attempting it, it counts as like its usage, so that unit can't try again. Um, but otherwise, right. I have other units. I have other leaders, for example. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll just put a counter. And it says star shell attempt made. All right, the leader in K two will attempt it. Even my die select is just going to be hilariously bad, isn't it? Depending on how you like your rolls go, I'll I'll suggest that you move to like random.org if you haven't already. Oh, okay. So I think I think the yeah. one thing that we need to keep in mind is um, 1.922, which is placement. Because I think that's how uh, you have to you have to set it. In the sense that um, because technically you don't have LOS to any of my units. So I have two choices. I can either place it initially in my hex, which yeah. moves it away, or I could put it three hexes, uh, any hex that is exactly three hexes away from me. Yeah, um, and, and then, then right again. No, no, yeah. I, yeah, I know I can't actually place it near any of these units. It's just going to do the three hex. OK. But I think that's pretty much it for me. OK. No advancing fire. No route phase. Advance phase. Uh, P9s into P10. I'm going to have uh, P go P7 into P8. Uh, D is going to go into M9. K is going to go into L8. Both stacks in uh, M7 are going to go into L7. Uh, squad in H, uh, H cloaking is going to go up to J8. G is going to go into K8. On this side, both M and the other um, and O are going to go into H8. And then over here, I'm going to have Q is going to go into E7. E is going to go up to D6. Let's do it. i this. Um, and B is going to go into B8. And J is going to go into C8. That's no CC. And that's it for my first move. Wind 
change. Oh. Hooray! There you go. Wait, is that serious? Printed and recorded sand of each night side and night snares increased by two. about it I don't have any uh you mean in rally or prep fire uh I don't think I can actually prep fire because I'm pretty sure I can't see you uh you could still star shell no Star shells may be fired in either the prep fire phase, defensive first fire, defensive fire phase. Performing at.
Reading it, it says placement during defensive fire phase. First fire can occur without seeing moving enemy unit, which kind of implies that I have to see. Oh, moving. gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it it is a night scenario and no star shell IR has been successfully fired in a previous player turn. May a unit that attempts and fails to fire a star shell during the enemy movement phase try again during the defensive fire phase? No. That doesn't answer that question. Uh, dang, I don't have any other questions. Hold on, I've got a... The movement phase defensive phase is considered one phase for... Huh, okay. If no star shells IRs have yet been placed in the game, the player's going to attempt to place the first one only under four circumstances. Um, first, if a friendly unit is line of sight to an enemy unit, not necessarily known, that unit can attempt to fire the first star shell IR. Second, if a unit places a gun flash and attack against an enemy unit, the first star shell can be placed. No LOS required to the target of the fire for the placing unit. Third, if an enemy motorized vehicle enters a new hex, that doesn't apply. Um, finally, if the enemy fires an FFE, this allows the placement of the first star shell. Gotcha. Cool. Side so may attempt so you know right right okay no so I think I actually could not have attempted that before so it's good that I failed uh, based on those criteria because I haven't actually seen anybody moving okay Also, I forgot that cloaking has six MF, so huzzah, I guess. Yeah, once once the first one goes off, um, then all they hell run. breaks loose. Not that it's gonna matter. So, if I'm reading it correctly, I don't think I actually can move. No, for, um, so the way I read it is that um, you gain it if you have LOS to a known enemy unit, which there are none yet. Um, you gain it if you're attacked by an enemy, if you're stacked with a good order leader with freedom of movement um, at the beginning of the unit's movement phase, and best leader if... Uh, dice roll is less than the ELR at the start of the movement phase after any attack by scenario attacker. So essentially, like everybody is just kind of hunkering down, doing whatever, and waiting for the Mongolians to do stuff. That's how I understand it. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and even then, um, until a particular stack has seen the enemy. I can't even do anything unless I run it. Run my my main leader around. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, defense fire. There's nothing for me to do. Advancing fire. I suppose it should really be same thing. So, nothing in advancing fire, presumably. No yeah, routes, and nothing route. No advances, no CC. All right. Technically, I should set that to access, but whatever. All right. Uh, turn two, weather, no change. Uh, oops. 
The next phase, prep, no prep. Movement phase. All right, now here's where everything starts to get juicy. Do you always have LOS to adjacent hexes? Um, there's, I think, like, one case where that's not true slash possible. But in all of the cases, yeah, you can use DF LOS to a, an adjacent hex. Like, I think the only exception is, like, if you're at the bottom of a cliff and you're, like, climbing, you technically don't have LOS to the, the top level of that hex. But, like, otherwise, if you're adjacent, yeah, you should be able to see it. And that's the thing, too, is that... So, the other thing is that it's... It's all... Um, it's all according to uh, movement in illuminated zones and stuff, which is interesting. All right, um, let's just go all out. So uh, I'm just gonna start on the right side. So uh, cloaking B is gonna spend one to go here, then two. To go into uh, um, a classic. Please don't go quite so fast. Yep. So I'm pretty sure I can see you, yeah? Uh, it's within the two hexes, yes. So can I fire at you? That's my question. Well, they are a cloaked unit. So how is cloaking? When do you lose cloaking? So cloaking is lost uh, in the same means as concealment um so like if i get a pin fast check that sort of thing um if i make an attack i lose cloaking um if i place a successful star shell apparently that also counts as me losing cloaking and if i suffer a sniper attack that's uh e 1.3 slash 1.43 1 Uh, okay, well, in that case, I need you to reveal it because you are actually in within two hexes of me in open ground, right? So you lose concealment. So the the way I understand it is that um, it's only if it's illuminated. So an infantry unit loses cloaking at night if it uses non smoke movement in a location that is already illuminated when that unit expends movement factors in it. Or if it's an enter, if I'm entering an enemy occupied location. Um, uh, e 1.31, if, uh, if you want to look it up. Um, so additionally, a unit in the act of movement when illumination first affects its current location has the option to expend no more movement factors or movement points during that movement phase and thereby avoid the loss of cloaking or concealment. So the way I understand it is, I'm running and your guys, they see shadows, right? They're, they're seeing so something move. I don't need to even bother paying attention to where you're moving because until you move up onto me, um, I can't see you, I can't fire at you. I basically cannot react to you in any way. So if you have a leader there, like I don't know what you have there, right? So if, if there's a leader there, he can technically now shoot a star shell. And if, it, if it's successfully placed, then I have the option to either stay in that hex and not do anything uh, and retain cloaking, or if I move, I now become uh, concealed or revealed 
depending on what I choose to do. Then I will attempt to fire a star shell. Let's see if I can get it off. It's a leader. Okay. Yes. Hey. hey. We will place it in the hex I'm in. <laughs> Do drifting and whatnot. Uh, yeah. Um, so north is always what one. Uh, I just always place it. Um, I basically use the same uh, counter as as a sniper. So yeah, one is always top. So on. Four. So it goes one hex directly south. Okay. Uh, hold on. Hold on. It's in ten. So I was firing it from C one. 8C1 and 40, it goes on top of 44C10. Places. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, got it, got it. So, star shell, just pull that counter up here to get that bad boy in play. I think it's the three. Yeah. Maybe a three hex. Yeah, okay. So that's there. This guy's gonna opt to. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, he's gonna opt to just stay there. Um. What else? Now the question I have is: Can I assault move and retain cloaking? Where's that chart? Oh, uh, I f damn it! I forgot to do something too first. I forgot to see if that guy strays or not. All right, so uh, from what I can tell. I think if I assault move with this guy, he will lose cloaking, but retain concealment. Like if I advance him or assault move into C9, that's how I'm reading it. I'm, I was looking up. I'm not sure if my guys actually lose. Um... Uh, the leader does because it's a successful star shot place. Unless um, it's yeah, unless it's he becomes oh, hold on yeah let's uh, before we get too hasty here or before I get too hasty uh, where is that concealment loss table which is huge cool Yeah, so if I understand this correctly, um, on the concealment loss gain loss table, uh, A12.121, 
Um, I think it's case C. So if it engages in any other action, basically anything that's not in the exceptions, um, it drops concealment. Examples given, extends to entrench, kindle fire, deploy, recombine, etc. But it would just be the leader that reveals himself. It wouldn't be anybody else. Oh, this is really annoying because I think I just fucked that up. Um, screwed that up, excuse me. Um, <laughs> Whatever. No, it's really, really annoying. Um, so I think technically anybody in an illuminated location can only have a line of sight to other illuminated locations. Uh, yes. So I do not have line of sight to that guy, so I could not have fired the starship. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, what's, what's the rule on that one? I want to see. If you're in an illuminated location. What's the, um... So, it? um... It's 1.101... 1 1.101. The NBR of all units in illuminated location is... Huh. The NBR of all units in an illuminated location is limited to illuminated areas only, with the exception of gun flashes. Huh. Okay, well, I mean, at worst, uh... How about this? We'll delete the star shell. You can conceal your guy. And I'm still going to stop my movement there because I forgot to do my uh, my straying dice roll. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, uh, it's so annoying. Uh, look, this is this is like growing pains of, of doing uh, night missions. Think about it this way. We're doing this with like Mongolian and Chinese troops in 1911 where like mistakes aren't necessarily as costly and so at least like at least it's not that bad all things considered um so uh, oh, I'm, just, I'm a little bit annoyed because had i realized that i might have set up a little bit differently oh that's fair um start of mp i make a movement dice roll so movement dice roll for this guy if the color die is a six, it's not cool. So I get to move normally. So the f what's in this one? This is the other thing too. Is like I have to double check every stack so I remember what's in it. <laughs> All right. So uh, J is going to move to B eight, then B nine. Then into uh, A10. That's uh, three movement factors so far. Then he's going to move into uh, into board eight A1 for four, <laughs> and then he will stay there. So I got um, E is gonna do uh, uh, six. Okay, lax unit automatically strays. He's not lax. Normal unit strays. If the white is three or more, a stealthy. If the white DR is a five or more. All right, cool. You're fine. I yeah. All your guys. Technically. Yeah. So uh, one, two, three, and four. And Q is going to do. He's fine. One, two, three, four. H is going to roll. They're fine. They're going to stop, assault. Stop, stop, stop. I'm sorry. I was looking at rules. Back up. You're, so, you're on top of uh, fortifications. Oh, uh, which one? C10 or, or 
or is it C10? Because it was the f the second guy I moved. If not, I can yeah, back on. Okay. Is D10 on a thing as well? No. Okay. So. So um, I was looking at the rule book. Yeah. No worries. Uh, have... Here we're gonna do this. Uh, back, 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 back. Where's my back, 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 back? Okay, so when E moves here, that's now technically two LOS, right? So um, does it reveal if I have LOS or just if I step into the hex with fortification? I think you have to actually step into the hex with the fortification. That's what I was trying to look up. <laughs> oh, okay. So let's let's check that out. Because if D9 is fine and then D10 is fine, then I'll just put this guy in D9 for now, just so that we, uh, fortification. Fortification, well, it's an entrenchment. Does that count as fortification? Uh, it's like under this, the, um, there's something about it. It's like they're similar, but not 100% the same. Yeah. Entrenching capacity. Uh, they're foxholes or trenches? Foxholes. Okay, I think that's entrenching. No, oh, entrenching. Let's see. Night. Don't have anything for night there. Where's the thing for fortification? Oh, right, right. So fortification is a casual term. Entrenchment falls within fortification. Duh. So, yeah, I think I need to... I think it, rem it loses it. So basically, it's like... Um, So I think you can see the fortification, but not necessarily the units in it, perhaps? Mm. I'm yeah, I wouldn't be able to see them, for sure. Um, I'm just trying to... Because it's annoying, because in entrenchment, it doesn't say anything for night. So I'm going to assume I have to go specifically to the night rules. Entrench. <clears throat> Fortifications, they set up hidden at night regardless of terrain, remain hidden until their protected TM is used. A non-dummy enemy unit determined by the procedure given in A12.11 for minefields enters that location that contains it. Or the pillboxes, but not a cave hex. All right, determined by the procedure given in A12.11. Beneath is not known, enemy unit cannot be inspected, yada yada. Okay, and then if we go to, because I think I understand how this works. I'm just not sure if they, uh, if they're technically in a in a um, in a fight automatically, or if they get pushed back. Because typ typically, if I was, if I 
let's say like I, I try to call your bluff and I go into C1, right? By going into C1, you then have to reveal that there's non-fakes in that stack. And I also have to, I mean, I think cloak automatically, yeah, it, it's assumed they're, they're non-fakes, but um, the point being that once wow. you know that they're a real unit, then I have to move back to the last possible location. And I'm yeah. So I think what should have happened, and this is probably my fault. No, no, um, this we're both learning here. Into B eight, way back when. Yes. You have LOS to the foxhole, so it should have been revealed at that point. Uh, see, the only reason are, I don't think that's you. So you had LOS from the nearest good order unit right so my hip is lost automatically no 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 you don't lose hip hip is super hard to lose i wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't reveal a hip unit just because i'm in los yes read case h it's concealment or hip for a fortification is lost automatically but not the units within it no so uh so uh, then we have to check and see if the infantry lose it, which I don't think they do. Okay, so the way, what I will propose is that instead of, I guess I'll lose cloaking. So there'll be a concealed group. So I'm pretty sure that happens. Um, yeah. So, um, these guys lose cloak. Are they actually attempting to go into that hex or no? Well, so the th just to to be fair, we'll assume that they that they didn't because if I did have LOS, I mean I don't know if I would have gone into into it or not. I might have paid the extra to go into the foxholes directly, but. Whatever, we'll just say he stops there. Because I don't know if that would... Because a hip unit can technically allow a unit, uh, an enemy unit into its own hex. Yeah, I don't think I would want to do that, simply because you guys are all Gurkhas and you're stealthy, so you're going to ambush the shit out of me and cut me to I mean, pieces. There's a, there's a two. I'm calling him for priest. Uh, I mean, at any rate, the reason I was backing you up is because I would want, I would want to fire on you. And so I was trying to figure out if I could actually fire you up, fire at you. Oh. Let's see here. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can. It's just that it'll be on the um, halved for concealment. There's a plus one for night, uh, and you you don't um, if you shoot with them, don't uh, reveal them automatically because I believe there's a a case for them to not be revealed. Well, so you I'm gonna put a gun flash. I'm gonna try and launch a star shell with them. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. and fail. Really exhibition. And then I will first fire on that stack that just moved into uh, D9. Okay. Oh, cool, the first fire already comes with that. So, let's see. It's six, or I'm sorry, it's, it's what, halved at a plus one, just for the basic stuff. 
so it's halved, doubled. So no mod on that. Yes. And one. then uh, plus one for the night vision. And I'm not sure if there's... I don't think there's any other modifiers. One, I, I'm so... Okay. So uh, movement, open ground, I think also. So I think it's just a flat eight. Or a six. Or flat six. Flat six. Five on six is one MC. One MC, cool. They're gonna lose concealment. I'll check if they break. And sniper. Sniper does not activate. All right. Uh, I think that's that entire endeavor over with. So don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, uh, do we need to put gun flashers or something on? One of those, come on. Uh, so gun flash, I think, is already it's already there because your first fire counter. Like your hex is already illuminated. Yep. Yep. Um, all right. So uh, H, they're gonna roll for straying, no straying, and they're gonna assault move into J nine. Do you have LOS into J10? Uh, from there, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, it's, yeah, adjacent hexes. So I have to reveal concealment, I believe. Uh, no, not when I'm moving. Uh, what else? Which one is it here? All right, uh, um, poke encounter O, they don't stray, and they will assault move to H9. Okay. Uh, click encounter M. Don't stray. They're going to go into G9 for two. Uh, so apparently I didn't read this right. Um, no extra MF costs for concealment terrain, which I didn't think was the case. So I don't know why that's a thing, but hey. Uh, let me just see if I can find um, concealment. Foot three night scenario is paying additional entered exception. Wait a minute. Oh, exception infantry re represented by cloak encounter. E1.41. Contents. Cool. Okay. So, yeah. Getting into here is just two. Instead of the three. Um, and then they will move into G10 for four. So let's see, can I fire at them? Well, they should have LOS. 
So star shell star. is always possible. And then well, yeah, I'm gonna try and uh, no, I can't because that's in one minute location and those guys. Well, yeah. Uh, but no, they're not. I can't do their. Um, so if you're within two X's of me, I can see you correctly. Yes, provided you have uh, normal LOS. Okay. Um, then the pillbox is going to defensive fire on you. Okay. So it will open up. Um, let's see. What's the tem for the uh, Olive Grove? Uh, one. One plus one for night. Halved because you're cloaked, concealed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there's it's halved for cloaking. Um, I believe there's still. Let me double check because I'm pretty sure um, non assault movement counts. So you'd still get the minus one for that. Um, so you have the plus one from night vision, really. So it's a if it's. Both of them together, it's a uh, two firepower up one. Yep. All right. No bugger. Malfunction. Uh, I th think that's actually eliminate, or maybe it's not eliminate. Um, so if a if you hit the B number, it breaks, so it malfunctions, but. So um, A9.7, yeah, whenever a support weapon fires, there's a chance it will jam or run out of ammo. Each support weapon has an inherent B12, unless it has a breakdown number on its counter in the form of a B number or X number. Whenever a support weapon participates in an attack in which the original IFT yada yada is equal or above the breakdown number, that support weapon malfunctions and is inverted. The attack okay, which causes so breakdown is still yeah, so it's not broken. Um, yeah, it's just malfunction. So it's not eliminated right away, which is good. Yeah. All right. No, that's fine. And I can't see you. Um, Okay. All right. Uh, cloaking counter D. They don't stray. Assault move to M10. Uh, we will attempt a star shell. Okay. And fail. And we'll open fire on you. Okay. That doubled halved. It's doubled much. halved and a plus one for night. That's it. It'll be a four to plus one. Uh, yep. Anything else? Uh, for those guys, no. 
But anybody else? Nope. Okay. Uh, K is also going to make his roll. That is a okay string. And he's going to assault move into L9. I have nothing, so if you're doing Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, I was just wasn't sure if you were going to do anything with the L10 or not. Um, I will have G cloak encounter. They don't stray. They will uh, they will move normally into K9. And then they will move into J9. Okay. Uh, I will have Cloak Encounter F, does not stray. They will move uh, up into L8, or two, as a normal move. Okay. Uh, and they will continue into L9 for four. All right. And Counter N, does not stray. It will normal move to K8, continue to K9, and finish in K10. Okay. Pretty sure I can't actually get to it, so. Oh. Um, Alright, so which... Cool. Uh, hex, or Cloak Encounter A does not stray, and they will Assault move to O2. Or, sorry, P1. O2. Okay. I will have... Cloak encounter P does not stray. They will normal move to P9. Okay. Follow into P10. And then go into P1. Okie dokie. Uh, Cloak Encounter L does not stray. They will normal move into O9. Continue into P9. Hold on, sorry. Oh. O9 it is. We will try to launch a star shell. Okay. From O1. And succeed! Woo! Nice. So I think Oh my 
is going to get interesting. So we're going to put it right on our top of ourselves and let's see where it goes. And it goes 5, so it goes on to P10. Blue okay, or should I use it? No, oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Are gonna keep moving or are you stopping? Oh, those guys, yeah, those guys are stopped. They are not gonna chance it. Can I fire at them? Uh, I believe you can, because you you technically have LOS on them. Um, I'm just not sure if you can star shell and then shoot, and if it claims um, defensive first fire. Like, the only thing I'm not sure is if they have to wait until the defensive fire fades or not. Uh, firing a star shell only has no effect on the fire's ability to perform other actions and does not cause a gun flash or loss of fire's concealment. But does it still allow it to have defensive first fire? Would be my question. Uh, Why is defensive first fire not there? First. Flares, which does not help. You know what? I, I whatever. Just uh, yeah. If you're gonna attack, attack. We'll just count that you can. Not a really a big deal. And if nothing happens, I mean, then it just means we'll retain cloak. That's the. At worst, I can look it up at a later time. It's not a big deal. So that's uh, if you're shooting with both. That's uh, the night bonus plus one, non assault movement. Uh, so it's a minus one on uh, two. two. Yeah. So two down one. Nothing. But at least it doesn't malfunction. Whee! <laughs> um, hmm. Yep, I think that's it. Defensive fire. Sorry, I'm mulling over. Yeah, no worries. I'm actually trying to look up um, to see when exactly star shells get removed. Oh, okay. It's literally the last action possible.
I'm sorry. It's been a long day. Um, so if you're adjacent to me, you have a LOS to you and can't fire on you, correct? Even if you're cloaked? No, no, you should be able to fire. It's just I'm halved for the... the cloaking, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. These conscripts will open up on N, so... K1 to K10. Yeah, so uh, two up one. Does. And these conscripts will also oh, will open up on M. Also two up one. Two up two. Uh, sorry, which hex into which hex? Sorry. Um, H10 to G10. Uh, so it's a plus two and halved. So two plus two. Yeah. So ah, two. Yeah, nothing. And sniper. No. Damn. You're very eager to use that sniper stuff. I just like snipers. I, I always find them fun. Advanced fire phase, no, no shots. Route phase. Uh, this is the only guy that I have that can route. They route to E9 and then continue into F8, as that is the closest. Closest eligible, I should say. Yep, okay. Advanced phase. Now this is where things get fun. So, uh, J is going to advance into the building in 8B1. Uh, okay, I can see you. Yeah, I believe that just means that he becomes a concealed unit. And I think you can see me, so am I unconcealed? Uh, no, like you still don't you you still don't lose concealment. The only the only way for you to lose concealment in my moves is if you perform an action or something. If you're just sitting tight, you don't um, you don't lose it. Where's my? I do lose. Let's lose it though. Let's see. Uh, Uh, you mean the fortified building? Yeah, I think it's considered a fortification. Uh, so, it's unfortunate that you revealed it first. Um, a fortified building does not need to reveal itself until you use the plus, the extra plus one. Or, technically, if a unit tries to enter that location, because a fortified location blocks uh, such entry. Again, maybe you'll forget. I doubt it though. It's alright. Well, it kind of it it means that anything I would have done with this guy, yeah. Um, yeah. No worries. Do what you're gonna do. B is going to advance up into A one. Uh, e is going to advance into C C. So that. Changes into this, and 
there's a CC. Now both M and O are going to advance into H10. Uh, this stack is going to move or advance here. N is going to advance to K1. Uh, these two hexes will both advance into L10. And uh, both counters here will advance uh, into uh, O2. I think these guys will also have to be replaced. So it's P and A. And I think that's it for advances. Yeah. All right. Um, All right, now I gotta remember. So ambushes are easier at night, but uh, I wanna start with this one first in C10. Since that one doesn't have, doesn't technically have ambush terrain, and I don't, I don't think there's um, ambush beforehand. Where's the, Stupid table. Nope. There. Shrine combat. E one point seven seven. Do I get any final fire or anything like that when you come in? Uh, not in the advanced phase. The final protective fire and stuff is if you move uh, into an adjacent hex, or um, you get triple point blank fire if, uh, say, like a berserk unit runs into your hex. Okay, so from what I can understand, there's no ambush roll here since the foxhole is not would not be ambush terrain. Uh, let's get the CC tables out here. Everybody, nobody chatting. Cool. Yada yada. All right, so close combat. So I'm dropping a concealment because I want to attack. I'm declaring hand to hand. So uh, it's a one to one ratio for both of us since uh, leader adds one. I don't think there's anything else. No ambush, no heroic. I might have to use the red Yeah, so it's the red numbers. All right, so you get to roll first and then me, or how does it go on? Yeah, it's me first. All right, so let's kill on you. Oof. Uh, so that casualty reduces. Um, the question is is uh so top then bottom for random selection all right does that i believe that's both so the squad goes to a half squad i'm just gonna clone them so we can track my losses here uh, and the leader wounds and he survives, thankfully. Uh, let me just label this here. Three movement factors.
Now, the one thing I'm curious about is if I can, by attacking you in a foxhole, can I be in the foxhole after the fight? And I, I don't think so, but. It's not in the same location. Blah. Is there anything that says? No, okay, so no, I am not considered in it. All right, so that's done. Uh, we'll do M10. So that one, there is an ambush roll. Uh, so M10? Yeah, an M10, yeah. So this one's gonna be a little bit more complicated. So, um, if it's a conscript, they're considered lax, so there's a plus one to their um, their modifier. And I... Ten? Yeah, an M10. Oh, sorry, I wasn't even looking if they're conscript or not. Yeah, so, so they're conscripts, so there's a plus one for lax. Um, I'm just trying to see if they have anything... M10. M is in Mike. 10? Yeah. Oh, sorry, H10. God. I'm a, yeah. I'm like, I'm like looking at G right next to it. It's like, oh yeah, I can see half the hex, and that's clearly what an M looks like. God. Okay. Yeah. Uh, excuse that portion there. Um, they're considered lax if that matters at all. Yeah, so they're lax, so they get a plus one to the ambush roll. I'm just trying to see if they also... Um, have anything that might reflect stealthy or anything although i don't think you can be stealthy and lax so that's kind of a moot point yeah they're stealthy not a money in order three blah, blah. okay so um i've got a minus one for being stealthy and minus two for being concealed so i have a minus three total and you get a plus one. So, place roll five. So, I roll a two. Okay, so we're equal. Uh, no, you said I have a plus one, I have a three. Oh, right. But I don't ambush you because uh, I still don't have two less than you. So, M. Oops. Oops. There. M and. Oh. Take concealment off both of those guys. So uh, I'll be fighting at a one to one. And you have an option on who to attack. Because you can choose either the half squad, the full squad, or both. And it kind of just. My I'm having before. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's. There's no, there's no having or anything for for that unless you're pinned, but that's not the case. So. Um. Do I have to declare my target before you roll? No, yeah, because it's simultaneous. Never mind. Uh, yeah. So uh, we will attack the three three seven. The full. Okay. Time. Okay. So you're fighting at one to one. I'm fighting at one to one. And. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Is it hand to hand? Can you declare hand to hand? Yeah, because I have to declare at the start. So, hand to hand. I want to do hand to hand on all these, really. Uh, six. All right. Uh, don't roll. Ah, damn. Okay. So that's dead. Take that off. That can come off. Uh, now J10. All right, I got that one correct. Uh, ambush, same thing. Oh, it's a fake. All right, cool. Take that off. Uh, K1. Hey, so uh, does moving into close combat? Adjacent to something else trigger. 
uh, in what way? Like, does me moving into close combat in L10 do anything to M1? Well, I'm just wondering because you can see a foxhole there now. So if I advance into it, there's nothing... Like, I just advance into, into that hex. It doesn't do anything for M1 or anything else. Okay. Um, so for K1, uh, same things. I get a minus three, you have a plus one. Five again, right? Okay, so... Yeah, so ambush me. Yeah. Uh, let me see if... I don't think I retain... Cloaking. Why is the chart not there? Whatever. Okay, I'm just going to replace it with a... Uh, N. Cool. Now, the one thing about an ambush is that it's... So it's no longer at the same time quote unquote yeah, so no, you get to go first I'm yeah so i'm declaring hand to hand um i don't think there's any other modifiers oh uh, i get a minus one for ambush but that's that's it so nine you have to tell me how many how many points are attacking oh oh sorry 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 uh yeah so yeah, yeah, for reference it's a yeah, three three seven reveal, not reveal you just have to tell me yeah, so it's three, so it's a one on one ratio, but I rolled a nine, so that uh, goes down to eight, so no effect. So now I get to attack back. Yep. Yeah. I have no idea what I can or cannot attack. Uh, so you're still fighting uh, a three firepower unit um, because I'm concealed. I have so yeah, two. yeah. Uh, it's uh, one to four because you round down uh, on odds. Yeah, that's why I was asking when the rounding occurs because one point five to three is a one to two. Uh, so you round it down at the end of, of calculations. So uh, versus a concealed unit means in, it's a one point five to three which is one to two. Oh yeah duh yep yeah. so you're good and yeah, then you get a so if, plus one if we round we we calculate the odds then it's a one to four but if we round if if you know that that's where that's where i mean it, it could go either way i don't know i mean no no sorry so the when i say round it down i just mean that like if you fall at uh one to three you don't you never go up you always go down yeah, but it actually, it, I understand that. So yeah, but probably, you're but so you're just at one to two. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just straight right, one to two. So, and I believe it's a minus one as well. A uh, plus one. And plus one. I'm yeah. Sorry. On the red numbers. Now I believe I have to reveal, and this turns into a hand to hand but also a melee and l10 this is going to be the dangerous one nah don't even worry about it <laughs> uh oh all right cool i was actually worried about that one. Oh, uh i also for some reason forgot uh oh two Oh, really? Okay. Dang. I was all excited for that one. <laughs> yeah, no. You've, you've got your demo charge over there, don't you? Uh, I mean, maybe. Planning, planning to toss some demo charges at my pillbox. From, yeah, from behind, yeah, for sure. Blow up the machine gun and everything inside it. Uh, yeah, and that's it. So, that's done. Um, should probably have mentioned. Uh, so, end of close combat phase, I will attempt. So, the one thing I want to know is um, regaining concealment. How tough is it to regain concealment? Uh, 
Uh, well, you get a minus one. So situations requiring a um, concealment counter dice roll in a daily scenario gains it automatically, and I can't. I assume that's all it is. So this guy can't apply for it because uh, he's not out of LOS. Well, okay, so that's not true. He actually is out of LOS. Since the guy adjacent to him can only see eliminated areas. Right? Right. Where? Um, so C10 to C1. C10, or C1 technically can't see uh, unless it's an illuminated zone. Okay, so so then I broken in. Well, so I guess he regains concealment. Broken unit possibly regains concealment as well. Uh, broken units don't uh, wouldn't regain it. Um, this is not mine, so it's not concealed. Uh, yeah, that's gonna look weird with the yeah machine guns. Not cloaked or not concealed. No, I know um, where that is. Um, th this guy yes, can conceal it. LOS, so he does have to roll. So that's the thing is that even if he's, um, if it requires a dice roll, it's automatic. Because why? So it says in the night rules. Um, in uh, E1.32, it says, situations requiring a concealment dice roll in a daylight scenario gain concealment automatically in a night scenario. An unconcealed unit beyond the viewing unit's night vision range is never known to that viewing unit unless the target can be treated as being within... I mean, you know what? I'll just whatever. I'll roll it. And... No, no, stop, stop. So there is no roll because you cannot gain concealment. I'm looking at a twelve one twenty one, the loss gain table, right? That's infantry in concealment terrain, correct? Mm -hmm. LOS range is less than or equal to sixteen hexes. Yeah, it's two in this case. Yeah. So NA is the, which means. Oh, yeah. sure. Um, this yeah, guy the, can't because he's. If you were at 17 or greater hexes, then you would have I, which is you yeah, could order and you make a concealment die roll, that kind of thing, then you would automatically gain it. So, right, right, yeah, right. Maybe we're all close enough that you can't regain it unless I do not have LOS to you. Right, right. Okay. Uh, and this guy obviously can't because he's in a melee. And I think that's it. Yep. yep. Okay, so yep. our shells go away. Star shell goes away. There we go. When do we do the melee? Is that in the next uh, CC phase? Yeah. So essentially, like those guys are stuck now. They'll they'll always be in um, uh, fighting melee. to the death. Um, if it's alright with you, I would like to stop here for tonight or at the end of the time. Oh, sure. I mean, uh, whichever you prefer. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, here is a good point before we okay. get stuck again, if that's alright with you. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, let me just save real quick. Save game. Two. One and a half turns, and it's not too bad for a couple hours, right? Start allied. Oops. Well, considering we started 30 minutes late and uh, we're learning the night rules at the same time, um, I'd say it's actually pretty good that we got through uh, one and a half turns, almost two full turns. In a six turn well, scenario as well. <laughs> well, now that we know like more of the night rules, it's like, okay, you know, this can be done quicker, that go here, go there, etc. Yeah, no, I, I think it's, and it's, you know, we're going to lose night in a turn and a half anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, and and you're going to have guys who can start, well, should be 
um, provided that leaders roll well and stuff, should be able to start moving and doing more uh, no, no, no. shitty stuff. It's, it's one leader. That that's what's so what's so heinous about it. Right, and right. Then, Your best leader. Only that nine two that that can activate guys. Everybody else is just kind of like. Arr. Even if there's already. Uh, it's combat. literally only your best leader can run around activating people. Dang. So, yeah. If it has either been attacked by the enemy, so it has to be, or has seen a known enemy unit. So technically this guy, uh, you know what? We'll do scene H10. I'm just gonna do that. Uh, oh no, those guys are illuminated, so these guys can't see. Uh, question: Can M2? I mean, M2 can see into O2 because they're both illuminated. Um, do they count? Uh, so it's a known enemy unit. So because those guys uh, remain concealed, they're still unknown. Yeah. So I can fire at them because I can see them, but they don't lose concealment. Or they don't. They don't get the numbers roll. Movement. Yeah. Cool. Uh, All right. Uh, so we. So uh, the guys in K two would though, because they can see the melee going on next to them, right? Uh, so because of they're in an illuminated spot, right? They can't see out of it. Was yeah. The, no. All right. What, I keep forgetting that. Well, I mean, I trust me. I'm still trying to like parse that in my head. I think it's because, like, you know, you're in a building and there's light, so you look outside and you can't see anything, which makes sense. If only they'd eaten their carrots, god damn it. Um, I was on those guys, so I remember because they're now revealed. Oh, sure. Uh, I think the other thing is if there's anybody. Well, no, I'm not even going to. I'm not going to mention it, but obviously, if they're in there. I don't want to try and like weasel out information. Um, all right, cool. The game saved, so that should be good. Um, yeah, perfect.